facing the Yazidis, but it, it would be good for any Iraqis if they want to read. So mm -hmm. it's it's not ex it's about the culture, but in the last chapter, in a couple of the chapters, I talk about how if the Yazidis wants to maintain their culture, there are some of the things they can do. Uh, I there are, so I think mostly our work because uh, you know being a teacher here and seeing the life here and seeing the both sides of the worlds and all different cultures mm -hmm. and w working and seeing how how hard to to achieve anything I mean when you Theoretically, you can say things are easy, look way easier. You can throw some many ideas over there. But the, the problem is when you try to change anything in the world, then that's the problem. It's very, very hard. So looking at that and looking how people, especially the young generation, Yazidis and, and also non-Yazidis, deal with some of these problems, uh, I thought it would be good to kind of write a book where will be kind of five advice good advice for how to deal with some of these big issues and, and, and avoid them and, and be more kind of practical. Mm -hmm. And so there was one of them is dealing with the issue of, of, of nationalism in Iraq and among Yazidis, mm -hmm. the, the problem of practicality. And I talk a lot about our organization, how we started the challenges, the things, we, the things where we almost led us to fail, the things where we were very successful at. And especially the, the personal, you can say, communication, how hard to communicate with other people and work with them, how you can maintain a relation like five, six years with the same group and work together and, yeah. and, and achieve anything and not make sure when there are disagreements, like sometimes there is big disagreements, how you can, how you can avoid that someone is going to just get up and leave and they're going to come back. So, and there is also one about, well, there was one about culture. Uh, specifically about culture, but I, I decided to drop that one because I don't have time. Mm -hmm. So there, are, there will be four chapters basically about probably 100 and close to 50 pages, but it's all dense, not not any extra, it's all dense. So I don't know if anybody's going to read it. It's going to be in Arabic, so I don't know if anybody's going to read it. I wanted to initially uh, write it in English, but then my goal is mostly for the people over there. Mm -hmm. So somehow I just decided. But English would be much easier because all the uh, sources and, and the books and the things I use, they are, they are English. There are few Arabic uh, resources that I rely on, so it's mostly English resources. And I have to sometimes translate and make sure the paraphrasing, mm -hmm. I'm not cheating the author or the whatever who said it. So it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, how, I don't know. Hopefully I can finish it and just put it there next year. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's actually, it's, it's, it's been an opening eye. Like there, because here is what, what I mean, even if uh, I don't know how much familiar are you guys with, because in psychology, you have this autopilot mm -hmm. that the things you take it for granted in your life. You don't think about driving when you drive. But if when I came here, I had to think about driving, be very conscious. Mm -hmm. It was too much work and effort for me to learn these things. But after I learned, I got my license. Now it's autopilot. So everything you do, like you say, hi, how are you? Have a chat. But for me, that none of that, it's, it's, in, it's, uh, it's taken for granted. It's auto. Mm -hmm. Like I have to think about what I'm going to say, how I'm going to even handshake with you. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, and certainly I start looking at my culture and everything from a different point of view. Now I am very conscious and I look at it, how I was doing things and how I'm doing things. But when I was back in Iraq living in my culture, it was just autopilot, automatic, I, I automatically things go and I know what to do, what to do. But, and I never thought about to look in it the way, like uh, why I do this or, or should I do this or not? And then mm -hmm. how much this work, how much this did, this did not work. But coming here, I had to look at it in a very, very different way. 
-hmm. So yeah, it, it's, it, it's, 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 I don't know, at least that's for me. I don't know how many people go through that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I have not asked anyone, but I know that was at least my experience. I got the chance to meet many, many immigrants who, whether they were successful immigrants or the, the people who had problems. I actually am very conscious now when people get in trouble in our community and I try to find out why they get in trouble. Mm -hmm. When there is a, uh, and like, when kids fail, especially kids fail, like why I uh, try to be very conscious. Like I told you, the problem with we have now problems with the new generation, especially mm -hmm. the 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 families. Usually, they are more conservative, and the kids are more liberal. And there is this 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 clash now, mm -hmm. and there is this this individuality now. These kids do everything they were not allowed, probably or not would do it because. So yeah, I mean, that's, I I. And I talk to my friends a lot and I see their experiences. I have friends who have kids and, and they talk a lot. He said, and I mean, I never, I did not expect this would come. Now, everything I know, my norms and I'm trying to preserve, my kids even, even don't pay attention to it. It's not important to them. Mm -hmm. Now I have to rethink like, uh, like uh, what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, it, it, it's been an, I would say not an opening eye, but it's sometimes, even difficult. It's it's everything again is changing because in Iraq it, usually that was the norm. If two people got married, unless there is a huge huge problem, and then they would stay together. It doesn't matter how many problems they have. Especially, the the women will not try to get a divorce because it would be hard on them. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of cases, the men will keep the kids and the women would not get to get the kids. So coming here, and also, so now they, both men and women, they have more freedom. Now they, they both can, can the, the things that were not a problem in Iraq, they, they suddenly became a problem mm -hmm. here. And now, especially for the men, now they have to deal with the idea that Everything they used to do in Iraq was a norm for them. Now it's the same thing for the women, for the girls. Mm -hmm. And that's something probably a lot of, it's hard for them to adjust, to adjust now. They have to, this is a reality. Mm -hmm. But also marrying from outside. We have many cases where we have Yazidis who married from outside. Some of the cases, their families were very harsh on them. Mm -hmm. I know of a couple families, they did not talk to their kids for, for years. But then they they had to, you know, it became a reality that they had to 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 go back to them and and just uh, now deal with it, and so and I have a lot of a lot of Yazidi kids would come to me or come to the other and they they will discuss this point. We had this, we had the Yazidi club in, uh, in North Star and this one day we discussed this. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And we had like a questionnaire for them and. And to be honest, most of the kids do not agree with the idea of marrying from only inside. Mm -hmm. Although they would prefer, because they know their culture and everything, it would be mm -hmm. easy, mm -hmm. but they don't want to restrict it. And so again, this is one of the challenges that a friend of mine, she's a Yazidi, she's a teacher too, Gule. And we talked the other day about this point too, now how we can deal with the community issues and at the same time trying to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, an issue to me as I, uh, I was very open about this. I got a lot of criticism that this needs to go away. And we had a problem when some Yazidi survivors had children from ISIS fighters mm -hmm. and they wanted to bring their kids because although they are from rape, although they are from terrorists, but they, they said they are our kids and we, we raised them for years and we don't wanna give them up. And a lot of, so the, the, the Baba Sheikh, the Yazidi religious, the head of religious spiritual council, he said they should bring their kids. But then because there was a criticism in the community, he changed what he said. He said, then the whole council said, no, we cannot do that because if we bring this, then that means we're opening a door that we may not be able to close it anymore. So I talked to the German TV, it's called DW, it's a very famous uh, German TV channel, it's in Arabic. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was uh, having this argument with an Iraqi 
a lawyer about this for like 20 minutes and I was open. I was like, to me, as a, as a human rights activist, as a Yazidi, mm -hmm. these women should accept and we should accept them as Yazidis if they raise them as Yazidis. Mm -hmm. But I faced many, I faced a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. So there is, it's, there is a huge debate inside the community. Where the debate will lead, I think it will, it will force upon us to accept it, although half of the community probably don't want to, but I think it's it's just a matter of time. The rest of us will have to accept it. You mean the kids from mm -hmm. ISIS, mm -hmm. ISIS virus? There are about, yeah, over over the, the number I know, there's some people who estimate a thousand. I, I know of there are at least 300, 350. Mm. Because, and so and those women who wanted to keep their kids uh, they stayed in Syria. They said either we don't go back or we take our kids. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's 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 a huge issue. It's not a and we mm -hmm. we work with many government, including the Iraqi government and the German. They are open to the idea. The U.S. is open to the idea that mm -hmm. maybe relocating them with their moms so they can then their their mothers would decide whether they want to raise them as Yazidis or or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah. It's a big issue. Uh, yes, there are, there yeah, are, we have a lot of partners. So we tens of thousands of people. We working. have uh, many organizations. We actually uh, we spoke with the the Christian community in Iraq and their organizations. If we can find a place, and so there was some German organizations, and, and again the German government was open to that idea too, and the, the U.S. also. If we can find them a place uh, within the Christian community, so those women can be there and raise their their kids, and then leave them to the future where they can decide. So yeah, we have many sites that we work with them, but unfortunately, that it's still a challenge, and people mm -hmm. can almost forget about them. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what's going to happen. So again, this is this is home, absolutely for me. But that's home too. Okay. So it's like imagine you born and raised in California, and then you came here and you lived here for twenty years. Mm -hmm. So this is absolutely home. You have many things you can relate to. It is home. You feel home, mm -hmm. and you have friends and everything. But also you born and raised there, so mm -hmm. that's also home. Mm -hmm. So uh, for for I can I can probably answer on behalf of the community that. I don't think the new generation who are born and raised here, they will go back, especially in such a situation. I have a friend who took his family, and his daughter is 10 years old, and she was crying every single day over there because living in that heat, uh, seeing all those people in need, seeing no schools, nothing. She, 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 she used mm -hmm. to cry every single day. She, she couldn't wait to, to come back here. So mm -hmm. that girl would not go and live there. Mm -hmm. But does she have connection with her? Does she want to help them? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. For a person like me who lived all his life there, I would want to go and I want to live there. I want to help people. But I also have to realize that my daughters would probably not go. Or not. Mm -hmm. they, they, would, they would want to go visit. They want to mm -hmm. help. They want to see. So I, I, that's why one of probably the plans in future, I think if my kids go to college after they, I have two kids, if they are in college, then probably is the time for me to say they are good on their own and I can go back there, do something. Yeah, I think answering uh, one of the earlier questions, I said that geography is very important to the Yazidi community and it's mm -hmm. a, a, the whole culture. So Yazidis used to take their dead back to Iraq to bury them because in Iraq, every holy place, there is a cemetery. So, and the people take their deaths where there are these holy places. So they get the chance to visit their dead and those holy days, whether it's Wednesday, Friday, we have certain holy, holy days throughout the year. But when ISIS took over and destroyed 42 Yazidi holy places, and 80% and, and of the Yazidi population became in, a, in, a, in 24 hours displaced in refugee camps, and people here in Lincoln uh, realize that is that's not easy to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So why, since we call this home, why we just don't have a cemetery here? 
And I think one of the, the, the goals will be to build like a shrine on that land. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be this uh, version of what we had in Iraq. You have a, a holy site, you have a cemetery, so people can go there and visit their dead. So, and I think that's, that's where, uh, yeah, after 2014, people realize that some of us may never go back. Some of us may never be able to call that home again. So I think it was more a was a more of a you can a simile or a, was a, in a metaphorical way you can say okay. at the center many people come because they feel that over there like for example when I was in in Iraq and when I was a child and we had a holy site in Sinjar in the mountain and we also had like a like a small house there. So my family used to go there on the weekends and stay there in the mountain. And that was my escape. Every time there was a problem in Iraq, there was, a, there was bad news, or I go home from college, I would just go there. That was a, a beautiful area and just kind of forget about everything. And it also was a holy site. So, and I, I think some of us here relate to that one, like I don't have any other places. So maybe if I go to the center, I will see some, some people like me and we can chat and have some some comfort and so that's what actually i meant it's just it's that just mm -hmm. a lot of people go there just even when they have nothing nothing to do or nothing they need help with they just see oh maybe i go there and just find someone to talk to Uh, last year we did. This year, unfortunately, we don't because last year we had, uh, the year before we had Salima, so she was teaching this cultural class in Kurmanji. She was teaching them some of about their culture and, and, and language. And then the year after we had the Yazidi club in both North Star and Lincoln High. But this year, because we have two, uh, two people who none of them feel comfortable to come and work with the kids and mm -hmm. they are not sure if the kids would come. So I am now part of the international club that I started with my other friends, teachers, because I, as a teacher, I did not want to start anyth anything for only the Yazidi kids because most of my kids are not Yazidis that I teach them. So unfortunately, we don't have that, that one. But we still have that group who they come to the center and they ask us when there is anything like we, we took them to the refugee day in Omaha. Uh, we, we send them to many events here in, in, in Lincoln whether there's cultural events or even in UNL. So, but the club, we don't have the, the club this year. I, I'm not sure, but I, I would say at least 50, 75 kids in, the, in that kid, wow. the Yazidi kids in that school, yeah. That's, that's, that's a quite number. I can I can I can say my my point of view. I I did not have problems here in Lincoln, mm -hmm. and uh, I did not have. I have many many people who actually helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. I have my advisor Teresa Catalano. Uh, for example, Dr. Thomas who helped me. I had I took some classes with many other professors, and after the class, they offered any help they can. Uh, I have many many other friends who are Americans born and raised here. Mm -hmm. I did not have a lot of problems. I probably had a couple minor incidents, but that's that could happen with somebody who born and raised here. Mm -hmm. But I am also aware of everything going on in America and I'm aware of the American history. Mm -hmm. And so and that affects everything. So and to be politically correct sometimes uh, and that's why when we were managing Nadia's campaign for mm. four years, that was one of the biggest challenges that we faced with Nadia. And she's, she's very aware of that. So, for example, you have in America, you have, there, is, there is a history in America, and we have the burden of that history. Mm -hmm. So, although I'm an immigrant and I came to this country and I'm a from minority, but... I have to be very careful to who I associate myself with mm -hmm. and what I say, what I don't say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and then when we, uh, helping Nadia with her campaign, basically managing, we found her campaign actually, we were very aware of this issue. And a lot of times, like whether these are liberals would try to take us to this side, whether they are conservatives take us to this side, mm -hmm. uh, or sometimes using Nadia for their own causes. There are some, 
uh, like feminist or there are some anti gays or there are so you mm -hmm. have to be very careful mm -hmm. as so and always we we advise Nadia we are working on a minority issue it's in another country we mm -hmm. have to be very aware of the problems of the US political cultural history of the US and we have to do our best to avoid to be part of, of any any group against any any other groups mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so we maintain good relations with everyone and that but that was that's that's a challenge even here like if i want to express myself uh, some people will look at me either i am with this side or i'm with that side mm -hmm. and it's very hard to maintain uh, to be neutral there's no one can and i think that's also cause cause problem because for mm -hmm. example many yazidis because of this administration the vice president they're helping yazidis a lot mm -hmm. and now i believe probably 80 90 percent of yazidis will vote for trump but there is also probably 10, wow. 15 percent, they are absolutely against it. But that does not mean Yazidis are with, with whatever Trump is trying to achieve. But it's mm -hmm. just because his vice president mm -hmm. is, 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 is working with Yazidis. Mm -hmm. He's receiving us whenever we need. He dedicated 360 million to our areas. So they, they feel that that's, sure. that's what I should vote for it. Where, for example, when Hillary Clinton was trying to run for the presidency, mm -hmm. she said, I'm going to bring 60,000 Syrian, but she never mentioned Yazidis or Christian. So mm -hmm. I assume Yazidis will not vote for that, although they don't hate anyone, but just mm -hmm. the, that's the, unfortunately the reality. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's hard. Yeah. It's very, very hard. And a lot of times, I think the, for me, the best way I look at, I, I, I believe myself, I'm, I'm from every single country, uh, culture in this world. Mm -hmm. I am an African, I am in South American, I am an American, I'm a Middle Eastern. I, 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 I consider myself as a, I mean, have an international culture. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about issues, sometimes I have to be aware that mm -hmm. maybe, although I don't have any of these biases, but maybe you listening to me, mm -hmm. uh, you will just immediately you will assume that I'm going this way or that way, or I'm against that way or with this, mm -hmm. with this one, because yeah. I have to say my opinion. Yeah, I think there are, uh, unfortunately now people are, no one can in America be, be neutral. I, mm -hmm. I don't think so anyone can. Mm -hmm. It's very hard, mm -hmm. like it's, it's very hard. Like I told you, I am not part of any political parties, but at the end of the day, I have to go vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or somebody will ask me about an issue, what do you think of that? And then I have to say, like, for example, the immigration issue, the U.S. immigration system was a chaos. A lot of people abused it. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean when I talk about immigration issues, I am against immigration. Mm -hmm. Actually, I am an immigrant. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of things need to be fixed about that system. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about immigration, for example, many people can certainly say, oh, he's, he's anti-immigration. Or some people can say he's with, uh, for open immigration or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's based on the interpretation. So, but sometimes you have to say your point of view regardless what people think, unfortunately. I, of course, the, the, this, this, I mean, and with the army, you have the, the idea of one country, mm -hmm. a strong country, uh, one military for the country, and we're defending the values of this country. Uh, mostly, I'm not, this, I'm not generalizing this on every single soldier or officer. Sure. I've seen corrupted people, I've seen bad people in the military. Mm. But that's the case. But when you come to the civilian life, unfortunately, that's not the case. Mm. You have many Americas. Mm -hmm. You have different values. Mm. You have different views even on the military. You have different views on what the American Constitution means to many people. So I think that's that was a that was a huge change for me because with the army, that that is the thing mostly. Mostly, I would not say entirely, but mostly, that there is this America with some values and one army, and we are defending this these people or these values. So, but the civilian life is way way different because soldiers, you know, they die for that. To be honest. They, they die for that. It's, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, a lot of people in the army I talk to, they, they don't have 
big salaries or they are not businessmen some, like some people here they, they they own millions or billions mm. but it's still they were doing everything they were dying every single day my best friend who was in a Yazidi interpreter died with me four US soldiers wounded with him I, I I worked for a colonel he went to some other places like in few days he I heard that he got killed mm. uh, I was drinking an Iraqi tea with a couple guys who were working on uh, we used to buy these these old weapons and, and so all kind of weapons and even mines and grenades and mm -hmm. and and just we finish our tea they went to work and one of them were, went off on them and they both died we picked their pieces unfortunately so but i don't think many people had a doubt that why they why they chose that path mm -hmm. so and i think but in the civilian life there is it's different it's way different I think the most significant is just uh, everything is within the reach. <laughs> yes, because in my town, if you wanted to go to a good doctor, you will have to go to a big city. Mm -hmm. if, if you wanted to go to a hospital, you go to a big city. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to go to a college, I had to, to leave my town and go to Mosul to go to the college. And in the town, you basically know Almost, if not in everybody, my town was kind of a big town, but at least I knew everybody uh, on my street, the next street, the street after, the one after. And, and so it's, but here you might never talk to your neighbors. Like you, you don't know them, you don't know, you don't know anything about them. So there were a lot of things actually changed. So mm -hmm. now we have to adjust. Like I have, now I, I know that oh, it's okay if I don't know all my neighbors. Mm -hmm. But I know the college is within 10 minutes away and instead of going to a different, living in a different place. Mm -hmm. And the hospital is closed, the school is closed. So it's, it's yeah, it's kind of different. 